I'm not going to use the microphone without a big mouth. I'm here to talk about it. I want to welcome you to our Needles Candidate Forum for 2022. Election day is November the 8th, and we have on our ballot Needles three mayoral candidates and three council candidates. Our mayoral candidates are Queen, James Jones, and Jan Jernigan. And our council candidates, which there are three council seats uh, vacant, so obviously we would be your council. <laughs> so we have uh, Jamie McCorkle, Joanne Pogue, and Henry Long Longbridge. Can you please turn your cell phones off? <laughs> That's why I set it up here so I do that. Each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement, two minutes for each answer and one minute for a closing summation. Uh, written questions have been submitted to us. They have been screened. Uh, they, are up, they are up here now. There will be no questions from the floor. And the only people that will speak are the candidates and the moderators. So I thank you all for coming, and I will hear to do so in long with our moderator, and he's going to take it away. Okay. And each candidate will have two minutes to make an opening statement. And we'll start with you, Queen. Thank you very much. I don't want my permission to photograph nor report me. They'll pay $15 billion for violating human rights. Needle City Government, residential voters, please take a break from City Council to mayor musical chairs. The U.S. government, filled with bribe-taking criminal politicians, need accountability. If you vote for the same politicians, you'll get the same results. There are strong religious faith, family support, and needles. Many pray in the following churches. The First Southern Baptist Church, Grace Lutheran Church, Jehovah Witnesses, Needles Church of Christ, Needles Church of the Nazarene. Needle Four Square Gospel Church, Needle Seven Day Adventist Church, St. Anne's Catholic Church, Assembly of God Church, Bible Tabernacle, Christian Church of Needles, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, Church of Jesus Christ of LDS, Calvary Church of Needles, Anglican Church, and my favorite, Set Free Church of Needles. In this stolen country, what do power have to do with pirates elected to public office to oversee quality health, education, well-being, housing, employment, transportation, communication, parks, recreation, justice, law enforcement, politics, religion, science, reparations, and clean, safe, crime-free environments? But power-hungry politicians provide unsafe, dirty water, utilities, leaky roofs, no bathroom, dry rot showers, rats, roaches, insects, mold, bad air drains the energy from your home. That's COVID-101. City government is the first line of defense for the public good. I'm here to get the job done. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Good evening. My name is Pastor Jim Jones of Firehouse Ministries. I'm a native of Needles, uh, born on the, what is it, Broadway and uh, G Street? H. 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 <laughs> now a vacant lot. Uh, class of 1985, which I did not graduate with because I was not a very good student. But I did make that up later on. Went in the military, served my country, Persian Gulf War of 1991. Served on four different continents during that service. Was at the Berlin Wall when it came down. So with the uh, end of that, married in Texas, came home, chose to come home chose to come back to the community that I loved from very early age, even though I couldn't get wait to get out of it when I was 16. I learned to love it while I was away, and I've spent my whole life living here and choosing to stay even when I could have left, 
even when I worked in other communities as a businessman and as an employee, I chose to stay in Needles. I love my community. I want to see the best for my community, and I'd ask for your vote. Thank you. This is Journey. Good evening, and thank you all for coming tonight. I was raised in Needles by parents who loved and supported Needles their whole life. Next month, I'll be celebrating my 50 year 1972 class reunion here in Needles. And we will be um, having our reunions at the local venues. I've been married 46 years to Steve. We have a daughter, Stephanie, who graduated from Needles and she owns her own business, a fashionable event in Orange County. I've been a small business owner here for 30 years as your local farmer's insurance agent. My entire life, I have volunteered with many groups and a supporter of our schools and rec programs. The generosity of the businesses and needles have kept many programs continuing through the years. In 2018, I was a citizen of the year and recognized by the county. I've also served as president of the Needles Downtown Business Alliance, and we held the forums prior to this. Um, five years, we did the Route 66 Holiday and Parade Downtown Needles. Four years, the Farmer's Market, my ultimate favorite. In that time, we did the sign for the dog park, the Santa Fe Park Corner designed by local business person Lucas Phillips, the Wayside Rest Stop on Route 66. The we are taking care of currently the Needles Wagon, and along with the city, we redid the terrain park on Front Street, the original Route 66. Over the years, we've worked with our businesses to promote them on Route 66. I volunteer now for the El Garces doing rentals, and that is teamwork. Now, we're, I'm president of the Needles Tourism, working with Route 66 to promote and market needles, especially our businesses. Um, two years ago, when COVID hit, since then, we've given out 60 Route 66 open for business signs. You'll see through the area and we've also have a successful tourism Facebook page. We are on the Route 66 routes through the United States. We cover Laughlin for tourism. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Anyway, thank you and vote for me. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jamie McCorkle. Um, I first want to thank everyone for being here. I love to see so much participation for what is happening in your town. Um, I think that is a big thing that we are lacking is people who are coming out and actually wanting to support um, with opinions or you know, whatever it might be with your city council and your actually city to make that movement that you would like. Um, I have lived in Needles uh, since 2001. I am married to a lifelong member of this community and his family who have been here forever. Um, I have coached here in Needles um, a couple times. I have also been a Pop Warner cheer director. I definitely support the children um, of our community. My son goes to school here. He plays varsity ball, football. I am raising two more kids here in this community, and I am proud to tell everyone that they are here in Needles and that they're going to grow up in a great small town. For the last 15 years plus, I've worked in advertising and marketing. I completely enjoy that to watch something grow, to help people grow their businesses. Um, through that, I have done a lot of different schooling um, for marketing um, and advertising. I've worked closely with Bullhead City, uh, Chambers of Commerce, uh, Kingman Chambers of Commerce, Havasu Chambers of Commerce, and both of their cities uh, doing different events, uh, marketing events. Um, I do have different um, professional uh, relationships with other community leaders. Uh, I think that is something that we definitely need in Needles. We might not be Arizona, um, but what happens across river does directly affect us eventually. I am just really looking forward to uh, serving the city of Needles and listening to everyone's concerns and following through with it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Pogue. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Joanne Pogue. I'm the newcomer to Needles, although I've only lived here a little more than a year. My sister has spent her entire married life here starting in 1961. I've been visiting here since the late 60s, and I fell in love with this town the first day that I came in here. Uh, for any anybody, I'm also known as Jean's sister, so you could give you a little perspective. So anyway, um, I am a retired banker. I have spent 30 years in consumer compliance, conducting reviews, identifying issues, identifying the cause of problems in order to turn around and fix them. You can't fix problem until you know the deep prob the cause, root cause. Uh, one of the problems that I, I kind of see here, um, obviously we have challenges getting businesses, getting contractors. We were just talking about how hard it is to get somebody to work on our house. And I kind of have a, a perception that we're being choked by Sacramento. They've got all these laws, rules, requirements, and they may be great for L.A., San Diego, San Francisco, but they're killing us here. We have no competition with Arizona. All of our businesses are going over across the river to Arizona. Contractors in Arizona don't want to work in California or can't because they're not licensed here. I'd like to see that go away and maybe we can have a little better reciprocity between the two states also grocery store there's no nothing new <laughs> so anyway that's kind of where i stand now and and hopefully you know i i can't fix it all by myself but i can work behind the scenes and the council can work together and see if we can get this fixed thank you, thank you. long break i'm henry long break and um I, I've lived here in Needles for probably the last four or five years, something like that. Um, I've had rentals here since, uh, well, over 20 years. And uh, I decided to move into one of my rentals and haven't left. Uh, I love this little town. This little town's cool. Uh, I really like it. And thank you very much, everybody out there that uh, signed my petition to get me on the ballot. I appreciate that. That's that's That means a lot. And... Uh, I have the same ideas as she does with the uh, um, with the contractors. You know, we need we we need to get somebody in here to do some work. You know, and it's hard to get California. Uh, anybody from California? I got a guy from Hesperia coming out on Monday. You know, to look at my roof, and it, luckily I was able to find one. It's really tough, but uh, anyway, the reason the reason I want to want to run for council is I I want to make a difference. I want what you guys want. I don't necessarily want what my ideas are. I do have ideas and I'm going to use my ideas, but I want to hear what you guys want. I don't want to be closed minded to, to anybody that says, well, this is what I want. It's like, yeah, I don't care. I don't want it. No, I don't. I want to hear what you want. You know, I, be, being that I'm new to this, this town, uh, I know there's people that have been here lifelong, you know, and, and they don't want these big major changes here and there. And that's the last thing I, I want to do. I, I don't want to change any of the history of this city. I just want to add to it. I don't want to take away anything. I want to add to add to the beauty of this beautiful small town. And uh, that's about all I got. Thank you very much. Going into the questions. Um, and Queen, I'll start with you again this time. This is very similar to the opening statement. Um, <clears throat> If you have something that you want to supplement your opening statement, this question was designed to facilitate that. Why did you decide to run for a city government seat? Well, it's a calling. And I've been called to every office. And if it wasn't for the corruption of the Board of Election, I would be in office. I am a law enforcement officer. And I would like to practice that just like some of the heroes are doing it now. And I like to welcome back Officer Weber, who received some injuries, and I learned from him that one of his officers even got shot. I can't believe that the crime is in needles has gotten that uh, drastic, and I would like to challenge the people of needles to be better. You have a lot of churches here. I know you better people. If we can get rid of crime, just eliminate crime for one year, you talking tourism? You're talking endowment. You're talking good people who be able to do what they want to do as far as eliminating any issues to help you, you know, 
not commit any crimes. So uh, we have an officer, a brand new officer here, uh, Officer Gonzalez, and I met him. And I tell you, I had to bring a picture because if you watch Humphrey Bogart movies and you remember uh, the treasure of Sierra Madre, yeah, <laughs> you had the Spanish, they, we don't need no stinking badges. Well, <laughs> he looks just like him. That bandit, he looks just like him. I like to get him on Halloween to put on that bandit outfit and uh, hit him with that. And my favorite people is law enforcement and needles and uh, Miss Dale, Dale Jones, the city clerk. She knows the city. And you might have sentimental uh, issues uh, and reasons to put, to put somebody else in office. But uh, since I've been here, the water been, it, it sucks. All right. I'll get back with you on that. <laughs> Thank you, Queen. Mr. Jones, can you repeat the question, please? Why did you decide to run for a city government seat? The gist of it is, is every generation has uh, the responsibility to step up and replace the generation before them. And as we see, uh, public servants like Dr. Paget retire and enjoy his retirement. It's time for the next generation, which is, because I'm his junior by some 20 years probably, it's time for that next generation to step up and start moving that ball forward. Um, this is not unlike what I do in, in my church. We uh, recognize the need and we take on the responsibility to fill that need. And there is a need in needles, not to disparage the government and the previous administrations, but there is a need in needles to have a fresh set of eyes and a fresh vision. And we all know that this, the previous administrations have worked extremely hard and kudos to them. They have done wonderful jobs, but there needs to be a new vision here, a vision outside of what we've normally seen and what we, uh, what we, have come accustomed to. And that vision includes uh, getting rid of statements like, we've always done it that way. We need to replace that statement of, why can't we try this? We've always been uh, a little bit risk aversion here, uh, averse to anything that steps outside of our comfort zone. And a new vision needs to put that aside and be willing to take some risk to move us forward in a vision that will be set by not only these folks up here and possibly me i want your vote i need your vote but it will also be set by various members of our communities the stakeholders in our communities yesterday i met with the tribal chairman um, mr williams and i'll continue when i get an opportunity okay, thank you. <laughs> Dave, would you prefer I call you Reverend J Jones? I'm not a Reverend. I'm a pastor. Pastor sir. Jones? Yes, sir. Okay. Would you prefer that? Sure. Yes, sir. Janet? Oh, thank you. Why did you decide to run for a city government seat? I'm excited to be here. As a small business person, I'm funding my own campaign. And I will bring a business sense approach for the city, committed to work for our local businesses, new development, and our physical image. I want to make sure we continue our family environment and work to remain physically sound in the community for our budget so we can continue on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jamie, why did you decide to run for a city government seat? Um, for this city government seat only, um, I do love needles. I love the history of needles and I want to be a person that works to preserve the history but also build a new history for the our children, um, grandchildren to come and secure needles for a stable future. Um, I feel that I bring unique qualities, uh, a new perspective, a voice for the residents, and that's why I'm running. Thank you. Mrs. Pope, why did you decide to run for a city government seat? Okay, you can call me Joanne. Yes, <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> it feels kind of odd. Um, well, I've been thinking about it for several years, even before I moved here. And when I come down and visit, and, and again, it kind of goes back to the grocery store. You know, why can't we get a grocery store? Where is a grocery store? Maybe I should run for city council when I move down here. So I came down here and, and retired, and my niece called me up, and she said, you know what, they're looking for people to run for city council. Said, okay. So <laughs> there's my opportunity. That's that's basically why I threw my hat in the ring. But as I mentioned before, I think I can provide with, with my problem-solving skills and identification skills. I think I can help move the city forward. And, Pastor, I agree. You know, we, we've got a a new torch passing on to us and getting some new ideas. And uh, I, I just, I hope at least that I can be a benefit to the city and help it move forward. Mr. Longbreak, why did you decide to run for a city government seat? Well, I work for the local radio station and um, it's talk, it's talk radio. And a lot of the hosts on there, they talk about uh, the different things that are going on in politics and, uh, if I'm going to talk about it, I got to step up to the plate. You know, not just talk about it, do something about it. If you're not involved in government, how are you going to do anything about it? You're just flapping. That's all you're doing. And I decided to be part of it. Uh, I'm not a very political person. I have two shows on there. One of them is uh, um, called Re Tri-State Recovery Talk, and the other one is Recovery from Politics. That means you can call in about anything you want except for politics. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way I like to keep it. I like to keep the political side out of it. But in, at the same sense, you know, I, I am running for a, a public office. And, you know, I want to make a difference. That's why I want to do it. Thank you very much. Now, in an effort to make sure that you don't end up being the last speaker in every series. We're going to stagger the starts as we go through the. Oh play. man, I got to double up then. Yeah. <laughs> so, Pastor, we're going to start with you on this question. What have you done in the past to promote needles and Route 66? First thing that comes, pardon me, the first thing that comes to mind is I stayed here. I shop here. I encourage people to uh, come and shop here. Uh, but like everyone, what does one citizen do by itself? Uh, I tell my friends and neighbors, my the folks that come from uh, another little I-40 Route 66 town of Shamrock, Texas, and uh, I tell them, hey, we got a cool little place here. And they tell me, hey, we got a cool little place here too, Shamrock, Texas. So we network and we tell people and we encourage people. Have I been on a platform of uh, to to promote or been involved with promoting uh, that in our in our town? No, I've been involved with other things here in Needles uh, that are crucial. Also, uh, firehouse ministries, food ministry, uh, clothing ministry, uh, putting sh putting shoes on kids, right? And I know that has nothing to do with tourism, but frankly, that's what I've been involved with my time with. And it, but now with this, I have the opportunity to reach out and do some of the things like this. My question it always is, is I go through other little towns like Shamrock, Texas. They have a thing called the Dew Drop Inn. Cool little place, restored, neon, draws people off that freeway, I-40. And it's 12 hours and 45 minutes from there to here. Uh, it draws people off that freeway to see what's going on. And my question is, going forward, what are we going to do right here in Needles to draw people off that freeway to come in and enjoy what we got? And that will be part of the job going forward, and I'll have the opportunity to do that. So I look forward to it. Thank you. Janet, what have you done in the past to promote Needles and Route 66? Well, the exciting thing we have going on now in Needles for to promote marketing, and that is the Needles Tourism Group. In that time, in the two years that we've formed, we, we've got our successful tourism Facebook page. We've passed out 60. I've told you of the Route 66. We're open for business sites. I, we all attend um, outdoor. We're working with um, the Oatman Chamber of Commerce. We work with Jim Hinckley out of Kingman. And last year, we put on a really successful Route 66 information fair with 20 vendors. We had 300 people 
and one day come into the El Garces. And um, we've scheduled that again for February. We're hoping it to be the same success. We have a um, film festival coming in January. We're going to have our third needles to Sligman uh, Route 66 motorcycle. So, and we're constantly working with California Historic Route 66 Association that really does help needles promote, you know, over in the LA area. So we are always looking for opportunities. I had a travel agent from Bullhead call me last week and her specialty is Route 66. She never did bother to include needles, but she's going to be coming down next week and we're gonna take her around. So we will be involved with that. And then in October, we have a travel blogger from Palm Springs. She was here four years ago and did needles, a three day trip of everything. She's coming back again. So we're hoping to have the same success with her, but we are always reaching for new opportunities. And one thing I will say about our group, you know what the cost is to the city? Zero. We cost the city nothing for all this work and the promotion that we do for needles. And we are continuing with new ideas and always looking for volunteers to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, what have you done in the past to promote needles and Route 66? So uh, past and currently, I am um, I have worked through my work, of course, um, on a publication that used to be the chamber directory. Um, I had the idea to revamp that and re um, change it around a little bit. And it is now the Needles Visitor's Guide. We've been doing it for about three or four years now. Um, all the stories are something that I have spearheaded. I've either written them or found the people to go in there. So I make sure that there is a nice presentation of needles. Um, that also is something that um, we give to the city of needles to use for marketing when they go out of town, when people come in. That is um, the city doesn't have to pay for that. I figure out ways to have that book printed and paid. Um, I definitely educate everybody that I come in contact with um, in Bullhead, uh, Havasu, Kingman on needles, the history of needles that I do know, um, all the things that are is to do in needles, uh, the community itself of needles and how great everybody is. Um, I have reached out to the city a couple times to give them some marketing ideas on how to market needles outside of the area to tourists, um, people who might also be looking for land for businesses. Um, that is one thing that I am hoping that the city now can maybe pursue or look a little bit more into because I feel that we do need to market outside of needles to show that needles is here. Um, I have also worked with Needles Tourism um, with networking and um, also shooting ideas back and forth on um, getting more tourists here, events here uh, to better promote needles. Thank you very much. Joanne, what have you done mm -hmm. in the past to promote needles and Route 66? Well, since I just moved here, <laughs> not a lot. Uh, <laughs> however, you know, in um, when I when I moved here, I was able to work from home um, in needles and, and uh, being on conference calls. And um, well, what's needles like? I'm talking to people in Delaware and Pennsylvania and my boss, he actually, during a meeting, he said, okay, I'm on my computer now. I'm driving over the river from 95 into needles. So it, my coworkers and friends are expressing an interest. Um, the, uh, there's a bunch of us women from college. We've dubbed ourselves the chicks from 56 because we were all born in 1956. We turned 66 this year and it would have been so perfect for everybody to come out to, you got to come out to needles because we got route 66, blah, blah, blah. And unfortunately with travel and COVID and kind of messing up, it was, it wasn't able to happen. But my uh, my gal friends are all going to come out maybe next year and, and we can party. So I just keep telling family and friends and even anybody, if I happen to be sitting in an airport talking, flying to Vegas, and, well, where do you live? Oh, I live in this town called Needles. And, and so mine is pretty much word of mouth that people that I can uh, meet up with. So thank you, Mr. Longbreak. What have you done in the past to promote Needles in Route 66? 
Bay Talks, 1340, Needles, California. <laughs> <laughs> I promoted a lot on the radio. Uh, and my two hours of uh, recovery from politics, uh, I talk about the happenings in Needles uh, every show. Every show. And I talk about the tri-state area, too. Not just Needles, but Bullhead City and Laughlin, too. But it's the gateway. It's the gateway to California. And uh, I promote that uh, all the time. All the time, what's going on. I love this little city. You know, I have I had a choice to live anywhere I wanted, and this is where I chose. And I chose it because I, I love the city. My neighbors are great. The people I talk to are great. The the little events we have here are great. And uh, and no one really bothers me with my service dog. You know, that's good too, because other people look at me kind of funny and it's like, Pfft. and she's not only a service dog, medical service. She works for the uh, uh, Mojave County canine foundation so she's a uh, public relation dog with them and uh i'm able to pr promote needles through them too uh when we go out on events you know that's 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 where she lives so thanks thank you very much queen what have you done in the past to promote needles and route 66 thanks for asking well i've been kissing a lot of plumber but because they seem to be the one uh to either make needles survive or turn into a, a ghost town. And they say the pinnacles of the mountains over in Arizona is what uh, they name needles out, out of. I, I really can't see it. What I can see is being in a helicopter a couple of hundred feet up and looking down at needles and seeing that the water that's running through it is a mere stamp. You can look through a needle and see how much water we have here and all we need is good plumbers who are not mad at the regulations or being charged to put toilets in the residence apartment, 75 or $80. And most of the people here, you know, we're all over 60. We have less than 40 years of life. So good luck reaching 100. But you got children here in Needles, good kids, and it's their future. You always possibly had to go all the way back to Nielsen, which is a ghost town, and what they did to all the towns around there to build a Lake Mead and Lake Powell. I think the big picture is fracture and block, blockade, and, and it's causing our little water a lot of trouble. And so we're not going to have tourism or nothing until we can get this water situated. And I understand with the millions of dollars that we just got gifted, that shouldn't be a problem. My only problem is getting people to act better so we can bring the tours in. We don't need no crime here. If you love needles, if you love what needles offer you, then we don't need no crime here. Thank you. Thank you. Jan, we'll start with you this time. Um, have you attended any city board meetings, city council, planning commission, utility board, or rec center board meetings? I um, regularly attend the city council meetings. Um, prior, I was on the planning commission. And prior to um, COVID, I attended the San Bernardino Economic Tourism Summit meetings that were always held regularly. So I do go out and uh, attend meetings and um, pay attention to what's going on. Thank you. Jamie, have you attended any city board meetings, city council, planning commission, utility board, or recreational center board meetings? I have attended uh, city council meetings, uh, both in person and uh, via the Zoom link uh, before, up until a couple weeks ago, or on Zach's if the Zoom link wasn't working. But yes, I have. So. Okay, thank you. Joanne? Yes, I've attended city council meetings. Yes, I've attended city council meetings for many of years now, even before I lived in Needles. Uh, I've come here and um, got frustrated at a few <laughs> and uh, been really happy at a few. But um, recently I've been attending every every one of them within the last six months. Excellent. Queen, have you attended any city uh, board meetings, city council, planning commission, utility board, or recreation center board meetings? Now without smoking the joint first, boring. <laughs> we 
we had to smoke a joint, then come to the meetings and see another perspective because that's how we get work done. Because going to the meetings, nothing's being done. What's important here? Water, the happiness of the residents, the well being of the kids. All right. And if you're giving your kids backpacks and everything like that, pencils, you, you have them get, you know, getting the job done. This is an educational tool, 360 VR, that will bring these children to a high level education, especially since that COVID uh, destroyed a lot of their education. I hope to give them that. And exercise. If it wasn't for the, the young ladies and they can walk the streets at two, three, and four o'clock in the morning, that's how safe needles is with their children. And they walk the streets and they be fit, they exercise, and they got me started. I sure would like to introduce them to something that can really get them uh, exercising and more happy in the days to come. And I'll show it to you later. But it's because of the women uh, that keeps me healthy. In the meetings, you smoke a joint. Let's see what we can talk about and then make happy happen. That's that's what I hope to do. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursday of, of every month for all the uh, means that we had to deal with from everything from cemetery to uh, utilities. Let's smoke a joint and see then what we can come up with and actually get the job done. Uh, law uh, enforcement, law uh, enforcement won't uh, disagree as long as you're not hurting nobody, hurting yourself, and you might have a thinking cap. Okay, faster. I assure, I assure you tonight, I have not smoked a joint. <laughs> Do you want to hear the question again? <laughs> no, I know the question. <laughs> uh, not to be disingenuous, just like the people that come to my, that are a part of my congregation, and they don't come every Sunday, they don't come every Wednesday, they don't come at every given occasion when the door is open, and I know it, and whoever asks that question, they know who comes to this these meetings regularly. So whoever asks that question, thank you for the gotcha question. I appreciate it, <laughs> okay? So let's not be disingenuous. I come to this meeting when I have skin in the game, okay? When there is something in the community that affects me, Right. So do I come to these meetings when when it affects me? Let's be honest. Let's not be disingenuous. That's the way the majority of people in needles do business. So will I come to this meeting on a regular basis if I'm elected? Well, I sure hope so, because that's like a pastor not attending church that he pastors. So I appreciate the gotcha question and. Uh, Thank you very much, and I want your vote. Thank you for that. Okay, Jane, you started that last round, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, Jane, are you ready? I'm ready. We're going to start with you. Are you committed to travel regularly for out-of-town meetings to represent Needles? Absolutely. Um, I I think that's one of those things that I might actually sign up for every time. <laughs> well, maybe not every time, but um, majority of the time, yes. Okay. Joanne, are you committed to travel regularly out of town uh, to represent Needles? Yes, I'm retired. I have the ability to do so. Okay, Mr. Longbreak. Heck yeah. Yeah, I definitely would. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to represent this town everywhere and anywhere I possibly can. Uh, that's important to me. Queen, are you committed to traveling regularly out of town to represent Needles at meetings? <laughs> In other locations? Well, if, if it's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary for me to go uh, with so many beautiful people and needles who can represent me as ambassadors. Now, you're talking ingenuous. You have Jim Jones here. Only Jim Jones I know is the one who poisoned a lot of people with that Kool-Aid. So, pardon me. Hey, hey, well, just a second. No, pardon me. I, I just no, pardon me. Thank you, guys. I'll have you all have a nice day now. Wait, I just wanted to give you the no, ambassadorship to, to act no, in my stead if I'm elected. No, ma'am. Thank you. You can talk about the water. No, that's we can't very talk about Kool-Aid and it's a tragedy that what? happened many that's decades ago. That's just a euphemism for our no, water. No, it's not. Him. It's character assassination. Folks, 
I've enjoyed this, but this is not being productive. So unless we can be productive, I don't see a need for this to go on. Be a public servant and understand. I, I am a public servant. But now, don't need to. But people. I don't need to hear about a tragedy that happened no, you some four decades ago. The fact don't is, is that is done and don't that is gone and well. We want you to stay. We're talking about you. Yes, ma'am. Stay. Stay for it, please. Stay for it. Thank you. Well, I, I like to thank Jim for taking it on the cuff, just giving them facts. But as the water, as I say, is bad, his name will represent that. And we can make some changes in utility with Jim Jones being an ambassador and going out traveling in my stead. Thank you. Pastor, are you committed to traveling with us out of town to meetings to represent needles? Yes, sir. When necessary. Uh, when it's appropriate, yes, sir. Um, but let's be again. Let's be genuine. Let's be honest. We have people here that still are in the working field. We have Miss Jernigan. She is a full-time business person that has regular office hours. I am a full-time pastor that has regular office hours. There are people here on this uh, on that are obviously going to be uh, council people that have already stated that they are retired and they have this time. So when appropriate and when when it can be done, absolutely, I will go and represent the city of Needles. Hey, thank you. Janet, are you willing to travel regularly to out of town meetings to represent Needles? I am, and I plan to sign up if I'm elected to you know, various committees. I really think it's important, especially if you're gonna take the job as mayor to go out and represent the public, especially at Scambag, um, any of the county, um, meetings i just feel it's important and i can get away from my job okay thank you very much all right we're going to start with you joanne okay. what is your understanding of the measure on the ballot for short-term rentals as a source of revenue and how it protects citizens for short-term rentals what is my understanding clarification yeah, I'm. <laughs> I've got a deer in the headlights. Look, it's a tax. That's Airbnbs. Yeah, the, the, you want to tax Airbnbs? Yeah, bed tax. Yeah, bed tax. Would that be for? It's it's a TOT tax, so it's the same type of tax that are on the uh, hotels. Uh -huh. Only it's on the Airbnbs or the VBROs that that people rent their houses. Uh, the weekends and so forth right now they're not paying tax right so it's a pass-through tax that goes uh is paid from the renters and it comes directly to the city so when you ask me what is my opinion on it how do i feel That's about it it asks yeah. what your understanding of the measure is well it's yeah it's a tax it's okay. Uh, it, perhaps it might have been a little more accurately asked had it what do i think about yeah. it is <laughs> And um, uh, Mr. Longbreak? Yeah, I understand exactly what it is. I've been coming to city council meetings and they, they voted on that. Yeah, so I know exactly what it is. Queen? Well, taxes is always up, uh, down. Uh, if it's going to benefit the people, having a B&B &B and adding taxes to it, then I'm for it. But I, I need to know what the people think. Okay. After? Um. The question as pre presented is quite odd, but uh, if we look at the Airbnb, I take it that's what this is about. Uh, Airbnb rentals, short-term rentals, a day, a week, a few days, these are taking the place of hotel rooms being rented. Of course, hotel rooms have a bed tax, have, have the income coming from that. So it makes sense that this industry is taxed fairly just like the hotel industry is. So um, as my understanding, the way this was put forward, uh, that's what the intent is. And I think it's I think it's a uh, it is f quite frankly fair play because if the hotels are having to collect this tax, the Airbnbs should also. OK, thank you. Yeah, I feel it's a fair tax and I really hope that citizens out there vote for it. 
You've got your hotels that are taxed this way and the Airbnbs. This came to the city from local citizens who complained about the Airbnbs in their neighborhoods getting overrun by cars on the weekends, loud noise, the cops having to go down there. So I, I feel it is a fair tax. It's And the way it works, it will go through the company, whoever they booked the, um, the house with or condo, whatever. And then the company reimburses um, back to the city. And this is um, extra revenue, revenue that we are missing. They're here driving on our streets, using our parks. So whatever we can, um, additional tax, we can get. It's a fair tax. It won't be taxed on the resident. The visitors are the ones that are paying this. Just like when you go to a hotel in the city, if you notice there's three different taxes. You've got a tourism tax, um, their local tax plus the hotel tax. So this really isn't any different than what you know you're paying for now in the city. Okay, Amy. Um, I do, for the most part, understand what the tax on the Airbnb was or is. Um, this is following in a lot of lines what other cities are already doing: Bullhead City, Havasu. Um, other states. So this isn't anything new. Uh, the tax is definitely going to help needles out, but it's also able, like Jan had said, there are a lot of issues in this within the city limits of these mm -hmm. Airbnbs and visitors that are abusing the neighborhoods that they are in. But this also gives the city a direct contact to those owners to let them know that there are issues happening at the Airbnbs. This is also a business, right? So we have a lot of business owners in here now. You all pay taxes. You all have to, in some ways, answer to the city, have permits and everything else. So this is just another way for those business owners of the Airbnbs to also be held accountable in other ways and provide back to the city. Okay, thank you. This is for the mayoral candidates only. Queen, have you attended meetings and boards and commissions so that you are up to speed on what all of the boards and commissions are working on in the city of Needles? Well, I look at the recordings um, when I can, and what I like to say is for the chamber and the many boards of commission and the service providers, uh, most of them who don't live in, in uh, Needles, but they work here and use the area code uh, seven. 60 as their phone number, but they they really don't need me to interfere with their business. I am a fiduciary. I cannot win if the public don't. I have to rely on the public in order for me to succeed. A fiduciary, what's that? Trust. Uh, the ability to act responsibly, responsibly for uh, the residents. And so uh, the commissions uh, and uh, the chambers and um, the many services em employees, they've been holding this uh, city down and making it work as far as what the uh, citizens need here in order to live. Only thing is, is, is lacking in water. Uh, crime and with those issues if uh, i need to deal with the uh, city council and, and uh, the chambers on that i would like to get them together but a little torium like this and we got 4848 people you know they don't want to come here knowing they got to come to the chamber <laughs> uh but yeah so i i deal with them when it's necessary when i do deal with them it's going to be about crime and what we can do about the water situation if they want to keep needles afloat. Okay, Pastor, have you uh, have you been attending the board meetings and commissions so that you are up to speed on what all of the governing bodies and needles are working on? Um, I think this is a redundant question. I think we've already asked this question to, in a different manner. Yeah. Uh, but gotcha. Question number two. <laughs> Let's not be disingenuous again. We've already established that we go to these meetings and these things because when we have personal interest. Uh, so when I have had personal interest in these things, yes. Do I read uh, uh, the undertakings of what the boards and the council have been doing? They're published. It's very easy to keep up with them. And uh, so, yes, I am. The, I think the ultimate goal in this is. Pastor Jones, are you knowledgeable enough 
to where you can take that seat and begin doing the work? If that's the genuine question behind this, then the answer is yes. Thank you. Janice? Um, yes, I do attend regularly as a small business person here in Needles. I feel, you know, it's very important, you know, with our business, plus um, all that I'm involved with the Needles tourism and marketing to come to the meetings. You do learn a lot. You see the forecast and what, you know, is going on, you know, for our citizens. So I do attend. Okay. And while you have the microphone. Yes. Do you have a strong understanding of the Roberts Rules of Order for conducting a timely, fair, and legal meeting? Yes, I do. And then um, that's also governed under our city charter, too. Queen, do you have a strong understanding of the Roberts Rules of Order for conducting a timely, fair, and legal meeting? Uh, well, I don't know about fair, but I do know the nays and yays of the uh, rules. Pastor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, some of our most recently supplied as the, our guests entered the building. Um, and we'll just start from the beginning this time. Queen, what do you see as Needle's biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? Well, the population, and you look at the demographics and one of my favorite is looking at how many of the various ethnic races is here. I like the mixed race because of my family itself. And I tell you, you're never going to find a landlord like mine anywhere in the world. If landlords was like mine, they would be standing in front of the president of the United States getting a medal of honor. Because that's how you treat uh, tenants. Without landlords, people don't have a place to stay, you know? And what's the second part of your question? What do you see as Needle's biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? And landlords, like I was saying, it, it's a big issue. Oh, we're a small town, but we have a homeless condition. Oh, oh, what? What's the problem with that? I already said water. I already said crime. And then you look at the housing authority. What makes people unhappy in a small town that is paradise? So I offer a hotline. You, you can, oh, you bored when you buy your marijuana and there's nothing to do. I have a beautiful recreation situation with roller coasters. You got Hilton here. It's just so many things you can do with the tourism. But first, you have to deal with the residents. What can we do to make you happy so you don't have to have any crime? Uh, bubbling up in our world just for one year if we can stop crime in this little town for one year that'll put us on the map in the entire united states and then you can call your friends and say hey we crime free you crime free i'm coming to needles you know so it's about making the people happy first can what can we do and we don't have enough to talk to all of us over six we, we got 40 years left Pastor, what do you see as Needle's biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? Well, we all have our opinions on this, but uh, you know, through the last few years, it's the biggest challenge to, or the biggest one for most residents here, top of their priority list has been, we need a grocery store, grocery store, grocery store. And that has been a, a uh, that's that fight has been, has been waged well, but, uh, the reason why we don't have a grocery store goes back to something else. And that something else is housing. Our housing market is 100% taken. We cannot grow because we have no place to put these people. And uh, dealing with the, in the environment that I deal in, one of the things I do is get people back into permanent housing. And that is so difficult here in Needles, almost impossible. Waiting list of years. In order to grow, in order to have some of these other things that we need, we have to encourage um, builders to come in and do some building, build some houses, build some apartments, and not only low income, but all the way through to some very nice luxurious uh, homes. If we start seeing that, we'll start seeing growth again. We'll start, maybe we'll see a grocery store someday. But I see the biggest thing on the horizon is 
People want to live in needles. Let me let me say that people want to live in needles. Let that uh, notion that nobody wants to live in California or needles, let that disappear from you. People want to live here, but we got to provide them with a place to live. So in my opinion, we need to work on housing very, very hard. Thank you. Janet, what do you see as needles biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? I feel um, one of our biggest challenge is attracting small businesses. You know, um, Billy B opened the boat RV storage out there on Broadway four years ago. And a year ago, he knew that he needed boat repair. So he bought in quality boat yard repair. And again, that's just small businesses feeding off of each other. And everybody is correct. We do have a real shortage of housing. Um, that should be really current in, in the council now. And I and I know that Rick has put together and, and Needles has been awarded, you know, a, a housing plan. So I think all of these things are in the works. Um, and we've got the growing, the cannabis here. And now that they're here, I feel we need to work with them. They've improved the commercial areas that we have downtown. Um, and also in the general plan, I feel we need to um, identify H Street to C Street as our downtown historic block, that we watch what goes into that area and that we really do try to preserve the downtown area, the El Garces, our Santa Fe Park, and um, the museum's doing a great job. Again, this will help us with the marketing, getting people off the freeway. Thank you. Jamie, what do you see as Needle's biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? Um, well, the biggest one is we're part of California still, but um, <laughs> moving on from that one um, is definitely housing. So re, it's one of those things you build it, they will come. There are people that do want to move to Needles. We do have um, a lot of grow houses going up um, who are hiring even more people now that would love to be closer to work. Um, instead, we... Like it was already said, we're 100% full, you know, waiting lists. Everyone is traveling across river and finding housing over there, even though that's also becoming scarce. So I think it would be a matter of promoting needles, um, but it would also be getting more involved, the the council um, to get more involved in the county, um, put, doing some pushbacks, asking for um, a little bit more leadway on certain things. Um, getting them to also help promote needles to move things back down here. We are paying taxes, you know, to a higher up. So it benefits everybody in the state and Southern California all the way down to the county level. Um, we have the land. We have the space. There is no reason why we shouldn't have the people coming. Joanne, what do you see as needles biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? Well, I'm I'm on the housing track as well. I think housing is uh, again affordable housing, um, and housing in general. And I think it, my my ideas probably go back to my opening remarks: is getting rid of the stagnant, the stalemate that the states got us put in, and to be able to attract developers, attract contractors, to attract builders, electricians, plumbers, et cetera, subcontractors. We can't build houses if they won't want to come in here and do the work. So if we can get some sort of relief, regulatory relief from the state, maybe that'll attract these these contractors and builders to come out here. And it's a good way to start anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Longbreak, how do you see Needles? Uh, what do you see as Needles' biggest challenge and what are your ideas to meet them? Well, housing, of course, and uh, contractors. Uh, we don't have any. We have contractors here. We have we have a great plumbing company. Um, we had a great air conditioning company that left us, and uh, we can't do business with across the river. Uh, I have a roof that fell off my house, and I can't get people to take care of it. You know, I have to go all the way to Hesperia to get someone for that. Why can't I go to Bullhead City? There's a lot of roofers over there. It'd be nice to be that they would be able to work here. I think that's a big problem that we don't have enough people that that want to come here and take care of the housing that we have already. That's my opinion on that. OK, thank, thank you. Uh, so as to not make you be last every time. <laughs> I'm going to start this one you with you. What do you see as needle assets? And how would you use them 
to move the city in a positive direction. Well, we've all identified for for decades what our assets are. Our assets are Route 66, our train depot, and our and our historic tie to the railroad. It's also the river. And um, not only that, but this wonderful desert we have out here that uh, people want to come see and people want to enjoy. Um, these are our assets. And these are uh, things that we need to look more closely at. I used to swim as a child in this place called Bureau Bay. It's just south of Jack Smith's Park. And that was where we hung out. We did we did what teenage boys do, right? And uh, that bay for years has stuck in my mind of why isn't that developed? Why aren't we seeing that just like we see in Park Moabi at Pirate's Cove? Why aren't we having a vision to develop the things that we have? We are, we get so preoccupied with uh, with all these other things that the things that are right in front of us, we genuinely miss. Um, if you travel to the little town of uh, Seligman, Arizona, they have capitalized on what they have. <clears throat> they are quite successful. Now it's a little kitschy. And it uh, may it may remind you that they're maybe a little bit on the hillbillyish side or 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 undignified, if you will, but they have a vibrant business community there, a vibrant uh, tourist community there. There is literally uh, buses, dozens of buses of European and Asian tourists stopping there every year or every day. I'm sorry, and there is a reason why for those folks traveling down I-40 to get off there. So our downtown business area. Our downtown historic part of Needles has been sorely underpromoted, underdeveloped, and underused, and lack of vision for that area for my entire life. Thank you. Thank you. Janet, what do you see as Needles' assets, and how would you use them to move the city in a positive direction? I think it, it just goes back what I've been speaking about all night is marketing Needles. Um, we need to make needles your destination, and that's our tagline on our Facebook. And greatly in the last two and a half years, we've had 100% improvement. And I'd also like the city to have a budget for marketing and slash tourism. And with that would also lead into somebody that was going to bring in small businesses. You could, you know, work with a local developer on that. So hand in hand, I mean, all we've been talking about tonight, we do. We have the river, um, our golf course, and we stress all of this in our marketing. And it has paid off, you know, with those coming forward, you know, to visit us. And, you know, what we hope four years from now is the 100th anniversary of Route 66. We've already been contacted by California Historic Route 66 Association and the European uh, Route 66. So... Everything I think is in the plan. We've been really successful and the youngsters at the rodeo needles rodeo committee are getting ready to do their 45th annual rodeo. So we are really trying to work hard to keep events that, you know, our tourists will come from and come and see. And we do offer it all. We're like Texas. We really should be needles, Texas. We have it all. We want them to come. We've got plenty of land, plenty of water. Thank you, Tillis. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Or Arizona. Okay. Yeah, Needles, Nevada. Right. <laughs> Needles, Nevada works yeah. for me. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> well, let's be Texas. We want everybody. Yeah. Taxes are too high there. Uh, yeah. Jamie, <laughs> what do you see as Needles' assets, and what would you do to use them to move the city in a positive direction? Um. The way I view this question is that there's two different assets um, or versions of the assets. Um, if we're wanting to promote needles to get more people to move here, we have a great, strong community um, that's full of sports, um, caring neighbors, um, motivated neighbors, uh, lifelong residents that had, you know, a very great small town feel to raise a family. So marketing in that direction to have bodies move here, um, become part of our community um, is something that I feel that we need to work at um, with a different marketing strategy. But then, of course, we do have a huge tourism um, 
spot that is not 100% being utilized in the right way through marketing and letting people know. Yes, they know. They come down here, use the river. They come down here and use the desert. But you really, you have golf course, marina. You have, you know, camping abilities. We have the El Garces, Route 66. Um, but I think marketing needles um, needs to be a strong point um, in doing it right and branding needles, how we actually want it to be branded, um, not branded in a negative way or with a negative new term or name. Um, yeah. But it definitely needs to be rebranded with new visions. Um, that's about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Joanne, what do you see as needles assets and how would you use them to move the city in a positive direction? The people. Everywhere when that when there's something going on, an event going on, the the Mustangs football game was packed, the rodeo was packed, the um, oh goodness wagon wheels. You can't get breakfast Sunday morning without waiting. I mean, the, I'm I'm presuming most of them are needles people that they support their town. How I can use that to make needles better? I mean, pats on the back. Um, you you just keep doing what you're doing. I, you can't improve upon uh, upon you great people. So I think that that's the biggest asset. My neighbors are great. Uh, the people are friendly. Okay, some of my family, but they'll they'll reach out to you. My next door neighbor, she'll she'll bend over backwards. I went over to uh, her house to give her some cookies for Christmas. She said, "Oh, I got a pair of jeans that I can't use. Can you use them?" And, and she's just willing to give me her everything. And and they're. The people are, are very nice. I, so I don't know. You can't you can't improve on that. I think you the citizens are great people. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Longbreak, what do you see as Needles assets and how would you use them to move the city in a positive direction? Well, there's one that we haven't used in a while since like Black Lane uh, uh, two, lane black. two Lane Blacked Up. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Yeah. That movie and the other movie where they blew up the bridge. Oh, uh, let's let's promote let's promote our town for the entertainment industry let's let them come out and use it you know why not i mean that that put us that put us almost on the map you know and then it went away no one's come out here since to build movie uh, make movies and of course we got the river here we got the river and when you get off the freeway at west broadway where are the signs that say El Garces is over here, the, the, the museum, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. I don't see any signs. I don't see nothing there that's promoting anything. They should be right there off the freeway, right when you get off to promote it to people. Because people come from Barstow. That this is their stop. They get off. And if they don't see anything, they're going to get right back on the freeway and go. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Queen, what do you see as Needles assets and how would you use them to move the city in a positive direction? Well, I'm trying. I'm the greatest <laughs> asset. <laughs> I'm not going to take a penny of uh, the money if I get uh, elected to this office. Um, I'm hoping that that money will benefit Needles residents uh, by any means necessary in order to challenge this uh, no crime zone. Uh, that's one of the most important things. But on the other hand, needles have the native people, and, and I really appreciate you showing them love. They've been here over 8,000 years, and these are the people, keepers of the river, and and they holding down uh, the reserves over there. And um, I know they don't like the fact that they can't drink the water anymore. You know, um, needles is a record heat. Away, we got the record as far as heat. You know, that's a record right there. So we got room for some fantastic uh, records uh, to bring forth some great tourism and some entertainment. We, uh, I talked to Needles residents, the ones I collect signals from, and they're bored. So we can get a hotline going and take data for the four thousand eight hundred and forty-eight people we got here. Uh, sit at home at afternoon after you get out working and got nothing to do. There's no entertainment or anything around, but you can listen to the 4,484 people here in Needles and introduce yourself to them, find out what it is going to take in order for you to be happy. You might need a new pet, a new paint job, you need to deal with the housing authority over there, you know, all slummy. 
it, IRS, any abatement issues, just anything at all, we can collect data on ourselves here. And if you want to do something, we can all give a dollar, one dollar. One dollar from each of one of us is $4,884 we can get us somebody here in needles. <laughs> we can hey, keep that going. Thank you. Now, let's see, Pastor, you started that last round, didn't you? <laughs> Somebody from the city may need to help me with this. I'm not sure it's being asked accurately. This is a recently handed in question. Where does the city of Needles water rights emanate from? Is that a legitimate question? I mean, I get that it's a legitimate question, but. Uh, well, it a, there's only one, one answer. Question. And that's something worth Maybe discussing and debating. Oh. Well, Jan, we'll just start with you. <laughs> Where does the city of Needles water rights emanate from? Um, if I kind of remember correctly, 1992, I know Bill Claypool um, met with the, um, went to Washington numerous times, worked with Jerry Lewis, Congressman then about securing the water rights for needles. He had a, his vision was that needles population was going to be between 12,000 and 15,000. So in his securing of that, um, that was his vision that we that he was going to do that. So that's kind of the basics. Of that. Okay. Jamie, where did the city of needles water rights emanate from? I am not afraid to say I do not know, but if someone does like to know, I will find out for you. <laughs> Love and honesty. What Janet said. <laughs> not a, not clue. a clue. Not a clue. <laughs> I'll say the Colorado River, you know, uh, it's bordering seven states yeah. and it's got, you got the San Juan, you got a lot of lakes and tributaries that flows through it. Um, you got Two Mexican states that uh, use the Colorado. If the Colorado River is vast, it, and it, we got a little bit of uh, needles flowing through it. Pastor, where does the city of Needles water rights emanate from? So, I remember uh, Mr. Claypool's um, conducting that, and I believe um, Mr. Chesney was involved with that also. Uh, that was the the formalizing of the water rights here, and I believe it also captured additional water rights that we did not have. Uh, before that, I believe the water rights were distributed by Congress, um, and in and I don't know how that actually came down, but Mr. Claypool and Mr. Chesney did, were uh, very involved in that, and quite frankly, that's why we have the water that we have today and the quantity of the water we have today uh, because Mr. Claypool and Mr. Chesney were forward thinking men that had a vision for needles. They weren't thinking in the here and now, they were thinking 12,000, 15,000 people, just like we need to be thinking. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you started that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Jamie, kind of a follow-up question. Oh, what is the Colorado River Water mm -hmm. Supply Project? And who does it serve? You know, I, I really I don't know. I have no idea. Joanne? Um, isn't that, and I, I don't know, but my guess is, is that the one they're trying to divert water from the Mississippi to the Colorado? There's talk about that. No, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I, there's, they've been talking about it. <laughs> the Midwesterners aren't happy with it, but I don't know. I don't. Okay, I, okay. Mr. Longbreak. I didn't have time to Google it, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's posing these questions? <laughs> Ellen, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it says here is some type of storage project, and uh, hopefully it'll benefit needles. <laughs> Pastor? <laughs> okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is stump everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all right. There's obviously someone in the, in the gallery that has more information on this than we do, and that's okay. So I'm going to answer this question the way I was taught to answer a question in the Army 
when I was standing before some superior that <laughs> asked me a question that I did not have an answer for. And that was, sir, I don't know the answer to that question right now, but I will find out and I will get back to you. <laughs> so that being said, uh, if elected, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I, I kind of think it is sort of a stump you because I've lived here all my life and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Colorado River Water Supply Project and who does it serve? Uh, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No idea. Okay. All righty. You started that, didn't you? Yes. Joanne, <laughs> what is your position on more marijuana businesses in New York? I think we have enough and I think we can get other kinds of businesses to feed off of it. We've already got a nice little nickname that I think is very offensive and we've, it's been, it's good to us. It's providing us a good revenue, but enough is enough. I think it, and yeah, I guess I'm done. <laughs> Mr. Longbreak, what is your position on more marijuana businesses than need? Uh, I think we have enough. I, th I think we don't need the nickname of Weedles. Thank you. Queen, what is your position on more marijuana businesses than needles? Uh, well, the more the merrier. It's about keeping the, uh, the people who come to buy at the smoke shops uh, entertained because uh, that's where the tourism is. You got more people coming from the border states coming in the needles because evidently the smoke shops are the best. But only thing is, they leave just as fast. And if we had a little entertainment where they can spend a little money while they're here, uh, we can capitalize off of that. Hey, Pastor? So uh, this question is the third rail question of the night. <laughs> going to offend somebody. We're going to offend the, someone that is adamant about in having more of this industry here. If you say no, and you're going to be offending someone that says, uh, yes, I want more. So th this question is a very complex one. I always go back to if I had Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, Seagram's, and all these alcohol companies wanting to come to Needles and, and do their business here, um, I'm sure that we would be overwhelmed for them to come here. Um, we have been, we have been uh, very tickled pink, if you will, by the this industry coming here. Um, so what do we do? We need to think this through. We need to get, uh, it's not my personal opinion that counts. Mine is just one of many personal opinions, but it's a collective personal, it's a collective opinion by all the stakeholders in this community, okay? The tribe is a stakeholder. They have an opinion. Do we wanna hear their opinion? The churches have opinions. Do we wanna hear their opinions? Uh, there are many opinions out there by uh, PTA group. They have an opinion. Do we list? Have we heard their opinion? So I think at this time we should be uh, asking the opinion of the stakeholders in our community. Now, I, I'm not going to dodge the question. What's my opinion? My opinion: It's a legal business, legal in the state of California, regulated in the state of California, pay taxes in the state of California they have just as much right to be here as any other legitimate business uh do i like the way they smell absolutely not do i like going driving through needles and every parking lot i pull into i smell this foul odor no i do not do i like having uh, a cup of tea on pardon me on my back porch and smelling it no i do not thank you janet what is your position on more marijuana businesses <laughs> Um, at this time, I I really feel with the revision of the general plan, I'm hoping that we have a designated area or section of town where the the grower buildings will be located. As far as the dispensaries type shops, um, I feel we have enough of those. But you know, we're a capitalist society, and I do agree they did come to needles, and we are benefited with the commercial areas cleaned up. And if something happens, one of them doesn't work, hopefully um, an Amazon, a small um, manufacturing or a shipping office would come in. I just, 
I feel for the company. I mean, I feel for needles and to retain our small community. I feel we need to have a limit. Okay. Jamie, what is your position on more marijuana businesses in need? Um, this is something I've spoke about at a council meeting once. Um, I believe that there should be a cap. Not saying that I don't believe we shouldn't have it. I am definitely for business. Um, it has brought a lot of benefit to needles. Uh, as far as the dispensaries go, uh, the city needs to be in the business to um, help the current businesses that they have. But by allowing so many to saturate the market, they're not doing anything for the business owners that already do own a dispensary. We don't have extra people. They're not bringing in extra people to come over here and buy marijuana from their facility. They are just shuffling the current people around. So um, in order to be a successful business owner, you have to be able to make profit and too much saturation. You're not going to make that profit. Um, I would echo what um, she said about the designation of um, the grow houses. Um, I I wouldn't be opposed maybe to having more grow houses as long as there is a designated spot, maybe a little bit more um, on the outskirts of needles, not so much in the inside where we can use that for potential retail of, or restaurants um, where more tourists go so that we don't have that negative um, look on us. Okay, thank you. This is just for the mayoral candidates. Queen, <laughs> if you could change one thing in our city code, what would it be and why? Well, uh, I'll, that'll be for the plumbers, evidently. Uh, because again, uh, a needles has a river running through it, but it's a stamp of a river. And what it needs is plumbers. That plumbers uh, will help the residents who have housing. And if you don't have safe water running through your house, you're going to have mold. And then you need air so you can take an air test to see if you got COVID with your air conditioners and all your mold running through with bad water. So you got Hilton up here. Uh, and I tell you, Paris, she's a party girl. I would love for her to come to crack a champagne bottle on the Hilton Hotel. Y'all got up there on needles and usher in a lot of entertainment. Oktoberfest, <coughs> soul food restaurants, the native people. Uh, yeah, uh, water, water comes first. Uh, and they sort of put law enforcement, you know, second, because if we don't have water, Needles is a ghost town, baby, point blank. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Pastor, if you could change one thing in our city code, what would it be and why? So city code, uh, if I could change one thing, it would be our uh, building codes. Our building codes, I, I believe, are too restrictive. I believe that we've adopted a, uh, a code that makes it very difficult for uh, buildings to be built and uh, companies to build these buildings. I, I think it increases the cost of these buildings to the point to where it, it makes housing unattainable because of these things. Uh, do we want safe buildings? Do we want buildings well constructed? Uh, yes, but do we want to do it in a way that's conducive to building buildings? Uh, I believe we need to, if it was me, I would read the first thing I would do is revisit that code and I would revisit to see how we could make it uh, friendlier to build homes here, build businesses here. I've seen, uh, and I'm going to use this two minutes, I've seen the extraordinary extent that these businesses have had to went, go to in order to build a building. The Hilton, the Hilton Hotel, I sat and watched them dig out 12 feet of soil before they were allowed to backfill it and then build on it. And I understand basic engineering principles, but that just seemed kind of stupid. So I, I, I think that that would be the one thing that I would change. I got a laundry list of things though I wanted to right behind right behind that would be code enforcement visiting the city code to see how because they are very restrictive on how people enjoy the property. So we could we could literally make a laundry list of why uh, people don't want to come to needles and build things, why people don't want to come to needles and do things because of these restrictive codes and these restrictive practices put in put into place under the guise of we want 
to uh, keep needles beautiful and keep needles safe and all these things. But we've all, we became the needles HOA. Okay, thank you. Janet, <clears throat> if you could change one thing in our city code, what would it be and why? I, I really feel in the city code, and I hope the new general plan is going to do this, that we really designate straight homeowners, manufactured homeowners, so you don't have that combination anymore. We have designated, you know, like the, vis the vistas are all homes. I, I really feel um, that we need to get back to that, just a straight designation for your homes, manufactured, you know, apartments, condo type areas also. Okay, thank you. And this last question is for everyone. And we'll just go back to uh, you, Queen. Yeah. If you were to receive a $1 million grant, what would you use it for in the city and why? Well, thank you. Uh, my two pet peeves. Nice, clean, fresh drinking water for the residents. Uh, I throw a big party so I can meet all the residents up there. One of the fields over here so I can meet everybody. And ask them how can we stop crime in needles for one year to set the trend for the United States. You 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 call it a beautiful country, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys are immigrants or whatever. How did I get the needles? My car went flat tire and none of the uh mechanics will fix it. <laughs> so it's been here ever since. Yeah, my car got a flat tire and none of the mechanics around here will fix it. So I've been here ever since. And needles is just like the river. Needles wants who it wants. And the river wants who it wants. But we can't breathe without water. Trees is not the only thing. We got plankton in the water. And that's 50 to 80% of our breath. And we have to take care of the water. We have to take care of the people. We have to take care of law enforcement because they have vision. And if I, if uh, Jim, Jim Williams, if he was healthy enough and I made it to this office, I would love for him to be the city manager because he got vision. We have uh, all kinds of entertainment here. Stuff like this. Oh, and that flows out of batteries. So, ah, there we go. <laughs> That's a great exercise too that you can dance with. I let that float around. I like to get that to the exercise women. Let them dance with that while they're walking around in your house. Okay, you're done. Get your flying talker. Watch the YouTube. Is that a drone? Oh. <laughs> Grab that if you can. Thank you. <laughs> Pastor. What was that, Tundra? If you were to receive a $1 million grant, what would you use it on and why? So this is a question that, that is, I wish they would have uh, said personally or collectively, but they didn't. <laughs> I, I perceive uh, it, 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 that's the way it's written, but I presume I, that it was if you were the mayor and the city receives a million dollar grant, how would you like to see it used and why? So if being the mayor and this, the money was given to the mayor or given to the city, not Jim Jones, James Jones, given to the city, that changes things. We would, uh, if it was my choice, I would be using that to promote needles to get somebody off these people off the freeway uh, to develop a, a tourist economy and a, a destination uh, for folks to come to and uh, to work that way. A million dollars, uh, that's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but it would be a great start. Now, if you gave it to me personally, uh, I could see a boat, a Harley Davidson, a, a <laughs> drive truck, I, but it's not, I'm sure they weren't asking that personally. No, they, uh, I'm, I'm, no but, you're not. Uh, but that money, I would assume, I would want it to go to developing needles, uh, an economy that flourishes, and through uh, through advertising. You know, I see uh, 
ads for uh, Seligman on national television. I see ads for Kingman on national television. I see ads for uh, Laughlin on national television, but I haven't seen any ads for needles. And the reason why is because we haven't given them anything to advertise. Thank you. Janet, if you were as mayor were to receive a million dollar grant, what would you use it for and why? Um, I know through the years, there's always been a lot of discussion. If I had a million dollars, I know it wouldn't be enough, but I think it would be seed money to build um, adjacent to the hospital and in between the senior center and assisted living uh, residents for our senior citizens. So they don't have to go to Arizona. They can stay in Needles and we can take care of them. Families can visit them. Okay, thank you. As a councilman, Jamie, if you received a million dollar grant, what would you do with it and why? Well, in the grand scheme of things, a million dollars does not go very far. Um, from what I've seen, some financials with the city and how much things have cost. Um, so I, I don't think I would want it to go towards a project that wouldn't get finished. So I would take 100000 of it, put it towards advertising and marketing needles outside of the area. The rest of it, I would, because this is important to other people outside of needles when coming into needles is maybe giving it to the down designated downtown area to do a facelift on all the buildings down there um, to make it look aesthetically pleasing to passerbys. Okay, thank you. As a council person, Joanne, if you were in control of a million dollar grant, what would you do with it? Well, again, I agree with everybody. A million dollars doesn't go very far. Um, but I think what I do, I'm, I'm going to go back to when I was collecting my signatures. The two things that the people wanted was obviously a grocery store and fix our roads. There's so many, I mean, you don't have to tear them all up, but there's some potholes out there and some pretty bad dings and dungs in the roads and they, they just want their roads fixed. That's where I'd go. Mr. Longbridge. A million dollars doesn't, like, like everybody said, it doesn't go a long ways, and it really doesn't. And um, being that I have a canine, I think the San Bernardino Sheriff Department should have a canine unit here. And I think they should uh, be more involved in public relations, too. And that costs money for them. They can't just go out there and do that on their own time, which they don't. And uh, that, that that's where I think it should go to, the San Bernardino Sheriff Department for needles. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes all of the questions that have been submitted. You will each have one minute to give a summation uh, final word. So, Queen, one minute. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, letting me be here. I hope you understand what a fiduciary means, uh, even though I might not say it correctly. But you can trust me, just like my ancestors treated you good. I'm capable of doing that. Uh, I don't suffer from no inferiority complex or any of those type of mentalities, but I would like to uh, have better people. We're in a future uh, that you got the spaceship up above, the James Webb, uh, and if you had any vision at all, it, it's no different than what you see here. We got worlds, China, India, these are worlds. And if we can't get along with each other, how the frick you think you're going to get along with an alien who might have teeth to eat you? Pastor? It's been an interesting night. Thank you for your patience with me. Um, Needles has got a lot of challenges. And um, I mentioned earlier that I had a meeting with the chairman of the uh, tribe yesterday, and we discussed those challenges. And I've been setting up meetings with various other stakeholders and needles to try to get a grasp of what their challenges are and what their desires are. And if this was able to move forward, collectively we could come together and and have a vision of where we all want to go, not where one person wants to go, not where one association or group wants to go, but everybody wants to go. And that's what I bring to the table. Um, I want to have an inclusive, compassionate needles, the needles that I grew up with. And the chairman of the, of the tribe yesterday used a term. He said, everybody, every other city here doesn't have what needles has. And he says, I can't put my finger on what it is, but needles has it. 
And instantly out of his mouth and my mouth came the word Mayberry. Yep. Go ahead. You're welcome. Janet, one minute. Thank you all for coming tonight. I really would appreciate your vote and support for the election for mayor. I feel I'm really qualified with the business common sense approach. I am concerned about keeping our community um, small and friendly and attractive to families to move back. We need that family base to help us move forward in housing and adding more uh, small businesses to our city. And thank you again and vote for me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, is all I got to say is that I think Needles has a lot of potential to work with what we've already got. Um, we need to get a balance uh, between what we have now and the future. And I think that um, being on the council, I could help um, get that going along. And I am not getting on council to be able to push my opinion or anything else. I really, really want to be a voice for the residents, the business owners. Um, so with sitting up here, I would definitely encourage anyone to come to meetings um, or even just reach out and, and give your opinion what your concern is so that everyone on the board can help address your situations um, and your concerns because um, retention here in Needles is definitely vital to the future of Needles. Thank you, Joanne. It's very interesting sitting on this panel and hearing all of the, the different thoughts from everybody else, the, the tourism and the small business and the attraction. I'm, since there's only three of us running, it's a pretty much given we're all going to be on the, on the uh, city council. And I'm really, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really looking forward to having some input and helping improve the city. And so thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you. Mr. Lombre. Thank you everybody for coming. It's, it's a it's an honor. It's an honor to be up here in front of all of you, and I'm looking forward to working with you three and whichever one of you guys are gonna are gonna make it, and uh, the present council people. Uh, I really look forward to that, and uh, I will do the best job possible. That's about okay. it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming and doing this. There were some very difficult questions. There were some gotcha questions, <laughs> so um, I want to thank you for your commitment to even running for office and your courage and your clarity of your answers tonight, and thank you for attending. And everyone in the audience that uh, joined us tonight and submitted a question, thank you for being here.